Hello everyone. So uh, they say that uh, you know it's uh, it's good to start a presentation with an interesting fact. So uh, the interesting fact for today is uh, today is World Bollywood Day. Yeah, that's right. Today is World Bollywood Day. Uh, now you might be wondering how is that relevant to the presentation that I'm doing. So uh, what happened was a couple of months back, Microsoft uh, Graph APIs for taxonomy uh, were released. And I did a little Bollywood dance after that, so that's why that's why it's related. Anyway, that's uh, by the by. Um, so uh, in today's presentation, we'll be uh, mainly focusing on that, uh, the Microsoft uh, Graph APIs for taxonomy. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, years back, um, I wrote my first blog on on uh, managed uh, metadata. So uh, that time um, I used uh, JSON to get all the data from the term store and display it onto the page uh, uh, using some HTML. Uh, fast forward two years, uh, we've got the graph APIs now, which can talk to the term store and uh, display the data. Uh, right, all right, uh, boring slide. So that's me, Anup Tati. Uh, I'm a SharePoint developer at uh, Content and Code, and that's my blog uh, on Medium at uh, under the username Anup T. And my, uh, I'm on Twitter as well with the username Anuptel. So I tweet about SharePoint. And then uh, that's my uh, GitHub repo. Uh, my username is uh, Anupti. Uh, so let's have a look at the demo first and then, then look at the code. So um, what I've done here is I've gone on to my dev tenant and I've opened the uh, open the term store. So here uh, I've got a term group called as one company, which is an uh, imaginary company, and in that company we've got a term set called as R locations. Uh, so this term set uh, basically uh, represents uh, the locations of all the offices of this company. Uh, so we've got all the different countries um, at the top, and then if I expand one of the countries, uh, see UK, uh, we've got London as Manchester, London and Manchester as the two cities uh, where the offices are. Uh, so, if I go on to the page uh, which has the uh, uh, the web part uh, for today's uh, demonstration, uh, so here um, I've got a web part, and what uh, what I do is I just edit the web part uh, and then set the uh, the property the only property which is the term set ID uh, as the ID of the uh, of this term set which is our locations. Uh, and uh, and after that, what happens is uh, the web part uh, queries uh, queries the term store, gets all the countries uh, which are the uh, uh, which are present in the term store, and displays them in this drop down. Uh, and then if I select a country, uh, it goes ahead and queries the term store again to get all the cities under the selected country. So in this case, uh, we get London and Manchester. And then if I select London, uh, it goes ahead and shows the location uh, in in a map of the uh, uh, you know of the sel selected city. Uh, so they, here we are using uh, the PNP SPFX maps control uh, to to display the map. And uh, regarding the uh, the pointer uh, or the exact location, the way uh, we are displaying that is uh, by using uh, the latitude and longitude that have been set. And if I just quickly go back to the term store uh, and then select London, uh, what we have done here is uh, in the description, uh, so which is uh, right over here. So in the de description, uh, we've set the uh, latitude and longitude um, that we need to be displayed uh, in the map. Uh, so that's what the web part does. Uh, now let's have a look at the, at the code uh, and how it's been done. So uh, all uh, the, the web part is part of the PNP SPFX uh, dev samples repository. Uh, so you can uh, find the code over there. Um, and uh, what I've done here is I've just expanded the uh, th that particular web part, uh, and we'll walk through it. Uh, before going uh, through this, I just want to thank Hugo for the presentation uh, tips. Uh, I've used Hugo's ideas uh, in, in this presentation. So. Um, 
what I've done here is I've highlighted the main component, which is the cascading uh, managed metadata. Uh, and that component, uh, let's start with the render method of that. Uh, what it does is it renders uh, the uh, the different controls. So basically, a drop down for the country, a drop down for city, uh, and then the map control, and finally the uh, message control. Uh, so uh, if, uh, th that's what we see, uh, you know, at the top we've got the country drop down, uh, the city drop down, and then the than the maps, uh, and then in that uh, same uh, same control, um, uh, we've got a method or a function to to get the countries. Um, so just before going to that, I, I want to mention that we are using React uh, uh, functional components over here. Uh, there are a, a couple of nice samples in the PNP Dev FX uh, uh, web parts repository uh, by Bill Ayers and Ramin, uh, which uh, which can be uh, looked at uh, for the for the. Uh, for the for, functional components. And I guess there are a couple of uh, demo videos as well uh, on the same. Uh, so we are using functional components over here. Um, now coming back to uh, this web part, uh, th the first thing that we do on load is uh, we need to get all the countries. So those countries are, um, are the first level terms in the country, uh, in, in the locations term set that we saw earlier. So that's why what we do is we hit the graph endpoint, which is term store slash sets slash term set ID slash children. Um, uh, so we would have gotten the term set ID from the properties that we set. Um, uh, so just to give you a, a, a quick look at the uh, term set again, we've got the R locations and then all the the countries under that, and that's what we populate uh, in the drop down on the left side. Now, once we have all the countries populated, uh, what we do is, um, uh, you know, when when a user selects a country, uh, we then uh, need to get the children uh, or the child terms under that selected country. So again, uh, we hit the graph endpoint, uh, which is now terms slash the term ID and children. Uh, that will go ahead and fetch all the first level children uh, under that uh, uh, under that term. So in this case. Uh, you know, we, we selected UK as the country, and then the first level terms under UK uh, were London and Manchester. So that's what uh, we get back from the API, and uh, uh, you know, we uh, we fill those details uh, in the drop down. And then what we do is once we uh, when we get back the cities. Uh, uh, we, we also get the description of the term. So in this case, for London, we get the description as the uh, the coordinates of the term. So that's what uh, gets stored in the drop down item as well. We will come to that in a minute. Um, so, what happens is once uh, the cities are populated uh, and the user selects a city, uh, we then go ahead and call this function, which is on city change. And uh, what, what we do here is uh, uh, we get that particular city and then the the description, uh, which has the latitude and longitude, gets stored as the key of the drop down item. And so we get that key and then uh, get the latitude and longitude from that key. Um, uh, you know, uh, we just split it by semicolon. And then uh, that's what we use uh, to, to display the map. Uh, so once we have the coordinates, uh, we just set the state uh, uh, with, with, with the required latitude and longitude. And the map control makes use of these uh, latitude and longitude values uh, to display the map. So that, that's the aware uh, part in a sense. Uh, now, uh, uh, the, the services that we are using here is uh, uh, mainly Microsoft Graph. Uh, so we've got a file here called msgraph.ts. Uh, .ts, and I would like to thank uh, Michael Swenson uh, for, for, this, uh, for this code. So he has written a nice blog article on um, how we can use Graph uh, in SPFX. I know there are a lot of options, uh, but th this is one of the options. So I've all I've done is just uh, went to his blog and then literally co copied that file and then put it in the services folder. Uh, that, that file has got four methods uh, to do all the CRUD operations. Uh, so all we have to do is just pass in the required endpoint uh, to one of these methods and then uh, the rest is taken care. And uh, caching, so caching as in, is an important thing in, in any web part or in any uh, code uh, that we write. Uh, so here we've got a file called mmdservice.ts. So what we do here is 
uh, we don't want to hit the term store again and again uh, to get the data. So that's why uh, whenever the web part um, uh, tries to get these cities uh, under the selected country, the first thing we do is uh, use the ses session storage to, uh, to, um, to get the required cities. And uh, if they are not present, then we hit the API, get the cities, and then uh, add them back again in the session storage using the session storage dot set item method. And then finally, uh, on the logging side, uh, uh, you know what, what I've done, done is uh, in the in the main component, uh, use these console or debug messages uh, we, to which we can pass some uh, the string format. So percentage s stands for a string, percentage o stands for an object. Uh, so what I tend to do is usually uh, uh, the the first one will be the a constant log source that, uh, uh, that you know with which we can easily uh, see the logs. So if I just show you an example of how it looks in the browser, I open the um, uh, the console and then if I search for cascading MMD, I, uh, it just filters all the messages. Uh, so in that way, it'll be easier to you know look at the information and to see uh, what's going on. All right, uh, a couple of improvements that uh, can be made to this web part. So at the moment, the web part supports only two level cascading. So that's uh, we select a country and then we select a city. Uh, so maybe in the future we can add dynamic level cascading. So maybe in the web part property we just set how many levels of cascading or hierarchy we want, uh, and then the web part renders those many drop downs dynamically. And then the other thing is local custom properties. So what we saw uh, earlier was to get the coordinates, i.e. the latitude and longitude, uh, we used the description of the term. Uh, so instead, uh, we can use the, uh, you know, the, the coordinates can be stored in the local or the custom properties uh, of the term. Uh, now, I didn't find any method uh, using the graph API to get these uh, properties, so that's why I was using, I was using the description um, uh, to store the, store the coordinates. But in future, you know, if, if there is an endpoint to get the custom properties, then uh, we'll be using that one. Or if there is one already, uh, please raise that as an issue in the repository, and uh, um, I'll look into resolving that. Uh, and finally, these are all the resources that were used uh, while developing this web part. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic demo, Anoop. I uh, really appreciate you putting that together. Very cool to see those capabilities.